So question 10A part 1, uh, the first part there tells us that 8% of the population have O negative blood type. Part 1 says that a blood donation clinic, 10 donors are giving blood. Find the probability that the 10th person is the third O negative donor. So that means that the previous nine people that give blood, two of them must be O negative. And it doesn't matter where those two are. It could be the first two. It could be the seventh and eighth. It doesn't matter as long as they're in that first nine group of people. So what we're looking at here is the binomial term. There's success and failure. Uh, o negative don't blood type or they're not O negative blood type. So using our binomial theorem, we have nine people to choose from. Again, there's only nine because the tenth person has to be O negative, and we worry about the tenth person in a second. But of those nine, two of them must be O negative, and the probability of getting an O negative person is eight percent, which is eight out of a hundred, or zero point zero eight, whatever way you want to write it. And two of them uh, are O negative, so that's my probability of success. And my probability of failure, i.e., not O negative, is ninety-two percent or 92 over 100, or 0 0.92, and that's the remaining seven people. And what I'm going to do to that then is, that's the first nine people, I'm then going to multiply that by the probability of the tenth person being O negative, and the probability of that happening is 8 out of 100, or 0 0.08, or 8%, basically. So I'm including the first nine people here, and then the tenth person here, because that one must be O negative. And when I multiply that out on my calculator, I'm getting a decimal of four decimal places at once, so 0 0.0103. That's my answer to four decimal points. Looking at part two to that question, at a blood donation clinic, um, five donors give blood. What is the probability that at least one of the five donors donates O negative blood. Okay, so the key there is the at least phrase. Now we could go through each of these separately. We could find the probability of one, or the probability of two, or the probability of three, or the probability of four, and add them together. But it could be easier if we just look at the at least one part, and the key for that is that if we find the probability of none of them being O negative, and subtract that then from one, that will give us the probability of at least one of them being O negative. So we're doing the opposite basically. And in order to do that, I'm going one, subtract the probability of none of them. Well, what's the probability of the none of them? So it's 92% would be not O negative. So that's 92 out of 100 or 0 0.92. And it has to happen five times for none of them. So I would be putting that to the power of five because I want five of them not to be O negative there. So that would give me one subtract 0 0.65908, which is 0 0.340918. And again, the question wants it to one, or sorry, four decimal points again, which would be 0 0.3409. So that's the probability of at least one of them being O negative. Part three to that question is using similar information. It wants us to find the minimum number of blood donors required so that the probability that at least one of them is O negative is greater than 0 0.97. So if you want to scroll back up there or rewind to part two, you'll notice that it took, was it, um, five donors gave us roughly 0.34%. So I'm basically using the same piece of information. I'm going, because it says at least one of them, so that's my one minus, my 92 over 100. But what I don't know this time is the power. I don't know the power, and that's what I need to find. And the question says, uh, at least one of them is greater than 0 0.97. So I'm just gonna use my greater than symbol, 0 0.97. So let's turn them all to decimals since they've given us the 0 0.97. So one minus 0 0.92 to the power of X, some unknown power is greater than 0 0.97. I'm going to subtract one from both sides or basically move over that one, which will give me negative 0 0.92 to the power of X is greater than 0 0.97 
uh, subtract 1. So that's giving me minus 0 0.92 to the power of x greater than uh, 0.97 subtract 1 is negative 0 0.03. You'll notice here I have a negative on both sides. So we can change the signs or in other words divide across both sides by a minus. And just remember with inequalities when we divide by a minus we must change the direction of our inequality sign. So here I'm changing the signs, so I must change the inequality as well. Now I'm going to page 21 in my log tables, and I'm using the right-hand corner piece of information. a to the x is equal to y implies a log of the base a y is equal to x. So I'm using that piece of information now in order to solve for my power x. And if I fill that in, my log, my base a is 0 0.92. And my y is my 0 0.03. And that's equal to my x, and my x is my power. Yeah, I'm right with that. We've called it x. So it doesn't matter what letter you called your power. Going to my calculator and typing in that into my calculator gives me 42 0.05 as my value for x. Now the question wants us to find what's the minimum number of blood donors. Just be careful, your answer there is not 42, your answer is 43 donors. Uh, because 42, if I subbed in 42 as my power there, I would get a value which is less than 0 0.97. 43 is the nearest whole number that gives me a value greater than 0 0.97. Obviously we can't have a decimal as a donor number, that's why we have to round it up. So logic there tells us it's 43, not the mathematics to tell us it's 42. Okay, uh, part B to that question, so it's different now, we've finished part A, those three parts were linked, B is completely different. So B is saying a homeowner has a problem with the heating system in her house, a plumber has identified the problem as a faulty part. The house owner knows that in 80% of cases, a repair of the part will fix the problem with a repair cost of 70 euro. If the repair does not work, then a new part will have to be bought costing 150 euro and there's an additional labor cost of 80 euro to replace the old part with the new. Find the expected value of the cost of fixing the faulty system. So it's a text heavy question there, but I don't think there's too much to it. So let's look at the first part. If we focus in on the initial um, repair, which costs 70 euro, and in 80% of the time it's going to be fixed. So that is 80% is 0 0.8 when I divide it by 100, and I multiply that by my 70 euro. So expected value is found by just multiplying the value by the probability of it happening. But I now need to focus in on the part about the issue where the repair does not work. So if the repair does not work, uh, she has to spend 150 euro on the new part and 80 euro on the call out for replacing it. So I need to look at the 150 euro and I need to look at the 80 euro. Now they're not going to be multiplied by 80% because we're only looking at if it's, uh, it's opposite, which would be the 20%. This is when the part which was fixed did work. So the question says 80% of cases um, are fixed. So we're looking, sorry, we're looking at the 20% which are not fixed. So that's why we're only multiplying these by 0 0.02 because this is the 20% of the time that the old part cannot be fixed when we need to replace it. So just to clarify, this part here is the fixed and this part here is the replaced when it's not fixed. And it's not fixed 20% of the time, and it is fixed 80% of the time. And when I type that into my calculator, add them together, I'm getting an expected value of 102 euro. So that's part B. Part C, again, is completely different. It's talking about a policy. So this, it's text, text heavy here again. So you just read it yourself first of all, but what it's going through here is 
Uh, 120 euro is paid out if person dies, 40,000 if they become disabled. Um, the insurance company have found out, so let's link these together. So 120,000 if you die, probability of dying 0 0.001. So let's find that expected value. So that's 120,000 multiplied by 0 0.0001, which is 12 euro. So basically in every policy, 12 euro must be set aside for the likelihood of someone dying. Then we have the 40,000 if you become disabled and the probability of becoming disabled is 0 0.002. So let's find that expected value. So we have 40,000 multiplied by 0 0.002, which is 80 euro. So 80 euro must be set aside for uh, someone becoming disabled. If we add them together, we get a 92 euro. That 92 euro basically stands for the average uh, payout per customer. So in each customer's policy, 92 euro has to be set aside for uh, paying out. Let's multiply that now by 18,000 because we have um, 18,000 uh, policyholders. So I want to find out what's the total amount of money that this uh, insurance company has to pay out. So when I multiply that, I get 1656000. So counting back three, counting back three. So that's 1,656,000. That's the expected payout. Now we don't need to write this down each time. Like you don't need to write down expected payout and so on. That's just to, to show you what we're basically figuring out here as we go along. Now they want to make a profit of 900 euro, 900,000. So we need to add on 900,000 to this to actually calculate the total amount of money that this insurance company uh, needs. So that's 2,556,000. So that's how much money they need to make in order to make a profit of 900,000 euro and pay out all those claims. Now we want to find out, find the annu annual premium per customer. So in order to get per customer, we need to divide the total pot of money by how many customers they have. Well, they have 18,000 customers. And when I divide that by 18,000, I get 142 euro. So the average premium that this company should charge is 142 euro. And that is question 10.